Many decades ago, there was a famous cowboy called Roy Rogers. He made many movies and also and eventually got into TV. His equally famous Palomino horse was called Trigger because the horse was able to respond almost instantly to any direction he was given. This video is not about Trigger the horse, but the Trigger effect in PowerPoint, which is able to respond and produce interesting applications, as we will see. The trigger effect can be used in a variety of ways in PowerPoint, and here's a couple of uh, applications. First of all, what it is, I've got colored dots here, which if I click on one of them and then click again, it can be made to appear and disappear like this. Now we can then uh, get a series of three circles and have a Venn diagram, which can be discussed uh, in various ways, academically or in business. You can have text outside or inside. If you want to discuss the areas overlap like this, for example, um, we can put that in there. And uh, so the uh, applications are quite uh, numerous. Here's the middle where, the, uh, where they all overlap. And here's another uh, application where we're dealing with uh, color theory. For pigments, for example, we can introduce the primary colors, magenta, cyan, and yellow and uh, uh, talk about the uh, subtractive uh, theory then areas where they overlap can be shown like this and then where they all intersect at once uh, we get a black color similarly we can talk about the uh, additive color involving light with the three primary colors here and uh, show their areas of overlap like this and where they all intersect we of course get white and this can be used in a variety of ways for teaching or reviewing. If you're interested in creating something like this, then this video will show you the uh, technique of how to achieve it. Now, if you're faced with a question as to how do I get the uh, exact colors of red, green, and blue, the primary colors, I just went to Google and put in the question for what are the uh, RGB numbers for these colors, and you'll get those numbers, and then you can uh, add them into the color palette. However, here is an interesting way of checking the colors. If you click on any one of them here and go to, um, you're at in home, go to shape fill and select this eyedropper. If you hover the eyedropper over a color, it will give you the red, green, blue colors here, 255, 0, and 0. And then you can use it to check any other color. So these are the primary colors, blue and green. And this is a very neat uh, tool to have. So the first thing is to make our circles. So we'll click on the oval here, hold the shift key down, and then uh, make your circle as large as you like. Let's say maybe something like this. Now make sure the uh, shift key is, is down because if you don't have the shift key, then it goes back to an oval. So as long as the shift key is down, it keeps a ratio of one to one. Okay, so let go of the click and then um, the shift button can be let go. We will now uh, center this. Now there's two ways of doing it. With, uh, here you can see a uh, horizontal line. So that's the middle. And then if we shift it left and right, there's the middle. So this is, I'm um, using um, PowerPoint 2016. This may be possible in 2013 as well. Uh, but if not, then you can certainly go to Arrange. So let me just put this up here. Everybody has the Arrange, and then we're going to align it twice. We have, we have all the possibilities here. So we'll align both center and middle, so the order doesn't matter. So we'll go to center, and then go down to middle, and now that's that center, which is what we want. Now we're going to uh, remove the uh, fill. We don't want to fill here, but we do need an outline. So let's call it uh, red. Now we need two more circles that are the same size. So you press Control D. D is for duplicate. And if we do it twice, we'll get our two circles. So let's just move them out here. And now we're going to overlap them. Now, it would be good to have the top of the circle um, touching the, the center line that we have there. 
So here again, um, this is PowerPoint 2016, perhaps 2013. If you don't have this, it might be a good idea to go to View. And on View, if you have Guides, that gives us a permanent center line, which is good to have. But failing that, you could also use grid lines. And I think all, all of them have grid lines. So if I look at the center right here, this horizontal line looks to be the, uh, the middle. So I'm going to move this down so that the top of the circle it's, is in line with that middle. And we'll do the same with this. Move it down here. Um, now we're going to move them to overlap as equally as possible. So we'll just eyeball it a bit here and uh, try and get this area looking equal in length to this area. Well, they look already pretty good. So then hopefully this whole center is uh, the same uh, size as these other two overlapping shapes. Notice that the middle line here goes right through uh, the circles where they cross. So I think that looks pretty good there. So now we're ready to make our dots. Actually, we can get rid of this, uh, this guideline now and maybe the grid lines go back to home and get the oval, hold the shift key down and we'll make our dots here like this, say. Okay, now we'll do control D to duplicate it, put it up here. Now this time if you do control D, uh, our third dot is the same distance away as these two. It's amazing that um, the con configuration of this is re remembered by the control D. Okay, now if we do the all three of them and do control D, it's all reproduced exactly. So here's our three dots. We'll need, uh, we'll need one more for uh, the, the middle area in here. So we'll just set that off to the side here. So now we have the dots. Now we just have to um, do the colors. Let's uh, add the colors now to the dots. So for example, the first one we'll fill it with uh, red and the second one with green. Let's say this green here and, um, and I will continue with the others. So I've done all the colors now of the dots. These are the uh, shades for the overlaps in here, and I've put in the three colors of the rings. Now, at this point, we're going to, before we animate, we have to go to Select Selection Pane, and we see here all the ovals, and the eyes simply mean we can um, hide it or reveal it. So, for example, Oval 1, which don't know what it is. There it is. It's the, the red. So we can hide it or reveal it. Now, when we come to the animation, it's going to be too hard to remember which ovals refer to circles or dots. So we will identify these first, and then they'll show up in the animation. So if we click on uh, oval 10, we see that it's the blue dot on the left there. So I'm going to uh, call this blue dot and continue on. So this one, for example, here's the light green. So I'm going to call this light green and uh, do the rest in a similar manner. So here, every dot and circle has been um, identified and you'll see how useful this is in a minute. We're now ready to animate. So we'll click on animations and put the animation pane in here to see what we're doing. And let's animate the uh, circle first. So there's going to be an appearance and then a disappearance. So there's the appearance. Now any animation you do to any object after you've selected uh, the initial one has to be done in the Add Animation panel. So we go down here and say Disappear. So here we have the red circle. So we're going to press Control and have both of them highlighted. Then we go to trigger. Now um, we choose on the click of and you see here we this is where it pays off we see all the um, dots and circles and we can choose which 
item we want to be the trigger to cause the animation to occur. So we're going to choose the red, not the red circle, but the red dot. So trigger red dot, appearance and disappearance of the red circle. So just to see how this works, I'll go down uh, off screen here and um, show the animation. So you see the red circle is gone. If I click here, then it appears and disappears. So I'll go back and apply the same thing to uh, the circles and then we'll look at the shaded areas. So this part has been completed. Here are the three circles, red, green, and black, and each one has uh, its trigger to appear and disappear. Now the next part is to create uh, shapes that go into these overlap areas. Let's copy this diagram here first of all twice and put it in here and uh, in here. Now we're not going to need the um, animation so we'll just click none for here, keep it clean and here it's grayed out so we'll just capture all of this and click on none here. Okay so now we're ready. We'll then select two circles, let's say this one and this one. We'll go to Format, uh, Merge Shapes, and select Fragment. Now you see there's a third, the, the fragment in the middle has been selected. So if I click out and click here, we can separate out these parts. And now the middle one, We'll select, we'll copy it, go back to the top here, and control V, there it is. So then we'll color it, we'll choose, say, the green, do Format Painter, and paste it in like that. I have to put it near the edge. So that's very nice. We now have our template for the other two. We'll duplicate this twice, so we've got two of them. And now we'll turn this one around, and you can see that if I go in here, uh, this color will be interfering. We won't be able to see the outlines well, so that's the beauty of selection pane by clicking on it. This has been selected. We'll hide it temporarily. And now we're free to move this into place and play around with it so that we get it in the space. And now we'll do um, the color between black and red. I think I chose this one. So click on here, go to Format Painter, and uh, there's our gray. So that's good. <clears throat> now again, we're going to hide it. It's been selected here. We'll hide it temporarily and then bring this one into play. Turn this, bring it in here. Not too bad. Slight turn. And we're going to color it this pinkish color. Format paint. And now we have all three. So we see we can bring these back and they're all there. The only thing left now is the triangle in the middle. So let me just hide these for now and go to our uh, second version that we copied. Now we're going to get all three. This time go to Format and choose Merge and Fragment again. So the one we want is right in the middle there. Let's click out and see if we can remove these parts. There it is. That's the one we want. So we will copy this. Go back to the first. Control V. And there it is. Very nicely placed and we'll color this uh, the blue so blue format painter 
and then paint it in. There we are. All right, we're now ready. If I um, reveal these again, we're ready to do the final animation exactly as we did before. So select uh, the gray, for example, go to animate appear, then add animation disappear, and uh, combine control button, get them both. And for our trigger, we're going to use the gray dot. Gray dot, there it is. See down here. So I'll just complete the others. So the other, so we've got four uh, new colors here, and they've been all uh, done as before. So now we're ready uh, to test it out and try it out. Here's our Venn diagram. Here's the first overlap. You can take it or our way. Here's the second one, third one, and the middle, and all of them together. And then you can take this away, play around with it. So the same principle, principles will apply to the color examples you saw at the beginning. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.